So how do you go about increasing your bottom line is something that I get asked quite a bit by, by clients. They seem to be working very hard but not making any money. You will see that people do great turnover um, but still always find them short on cash. So how can you get that extra profit to your bottom line? How can you get that extra cash into the business? Um, because in business, it's not just about the money that you make, it's got about the money that you take. That's more important, you know, turnover is vanity. You can have a million pound business and still take 10,000 pounds out of that business as profit. Or you could have a 500,000 pound business and have 250,000 pound profit. So it's about working smarter, not harder. You could be a busy fool working very hard and have a business that you could publicly tell everyone I'm a 10 million pound turnover business, but if you're not taking anything home, it's pointless. So how do you get that bottom line um, higher? How do you make more money out of your business? Well, there are lots of, of courses and lots of books on, and material and videos that you could see online um, to do that. So obviously in such a short video, we're not gonna cover that, but all I wanted to do was share four basic ideas that I've used and seen in business um, that have helped give that boost to the bottom line. Um, so in business, you, you'll have staff. Obviously, if you start up, it's a little bit different, but this is kind of talking to business owners who've actually got a business and, and making money now. And so you'll have staff in that business. And some of the stats show that if you can increase um, employee pro productivity, it can equate to around about 20, 25% extra profits. So as a business owner, it's in your best interest to ensure that you, you are getting the best out of your staff. So how do you do that? Well, again, there's lots of books and lots of people that are far more qualified than me to tell you how to get the best out of your staff. But some simple things that I've seen is, is just having a good culture in a business, people happy to work and being flexible with them, getting allowing them to have a good work-life balance if that's what they want, um, incentivizing them, uh, giving them challenges that are attainable, being a good owner and a good boss, being able to communicate and, and if people are happy to come to work then they're going to be more productive. If with the remote working now that's more commonplace due to what's gone on in the last two years, um, having that available to staff if they can be more productive at home then um, and having a good balance between the office and home then by all means embrace that. So looking at ways to try and increase productivity in staff uh, can certainly help you um, boost that bottom line. So that's one way. Um, I mean, training as well, to, you know, investing in staff um, in terms of training is a great way. And you know, in terms of when I was starting out um, as an accountant, the company that I first worked for gave me the training and the um, you know the free time to be able to go and study, and that all helped me to. To, to, to get the qualification, but also to be more productive because you felt more, you felt loyal to the business, but also you were getting trained to do your job better. Um, marketing, marketing is a big overhead in most businesses. A lot of people throw a lot of money at marketing because you're trying to grow your business, so marketing is the way. I've fallen foul of it. Um, and I think that's an area of the business which you, you can look at. You know, it's no good in trying to throw as much mud at the wall to see what will stick. It's about looking and learning about which marketing campaigns are the most successful, um, which strategies get you better return, and then just focus on that uh, rather than trying lots of different things and um, trying to throw budget here and there and everywhere, trying to see, well, maybe we'll do this and this will work. Um, try and find something that does work and then just focus on that because marketing I can find, find to be quite a big percentage of, of um, overhead spend. Uh, cutting down overheads seems a simple 
suggestion, but often people forget about looking at the costs, that, you know, automatically renew on things such as insurance or utilities or rents. Um, don't really think about negotiations. Are you getting the best rates? Are you getting the best prices from your suppliers? Um, if you're buying in bulk with suppliers, can you go back and negotiate um, a bulk discount? People agree a rate and then for years they're on that rate where they realise they could get a lower rate. If you're doing remote working now, you know, if you can offer that because people are used to that now, that could save you some costs in terms of office space. Um, having a look at software, software uh, costs, I see quite a lot in tech and marketing businesses, people don't really review those, it's easy to sort of stick them on a monthly um, plan with a credit card or a debit card, use it for a few months and then you forget about it but then you know the odd £20 comes out of the business and it's easy to forget but I know with one client we had a look and, and he was spending about five to five and a half thousand pounds a month on software and so we looked at it and we got that down to 1500 because he said oh no I don't use that I don't use that oh why am I still paying that off I know that stuff and he doesn't use that anymore so you know having a look at simple things like that can save you some money and give you that extra boost um, to, to your bottom line uh, credit terms as well tightening credit terms um, can help so in some businesses where you're giving uh, your customers credits maybe wholesale businesses or if you're selling product to to businesses or services which are used to getting credit um, that can really hurt you if you don't focus on that and get that get those terms tighter you know late paying customers are an absolute nightmare how much your turnover is irrelevant if they're not paying you could have a 20 million pound business but if you come customers are never paying you, you're gonna go out of business very, very quickly. So have a look at tightening those credit terms, maybe not giving as much credit, try and negotiate down, give early payment, settlement discounts, you know, cash is king, yeah, you might be eating into your profit a little bit if you give them a discount, but if it gets you paid earlier, then, you know, the cash, cash, cash in the business is better in your pocket than in your customer's pocket. So, you know, Look at that, look at maybe tighten up on your credit terms, maybe introducing late fees to make sure that people pay you. Um, look at shortening that uh, age debtor period, you know, in terms of the way you collect cash uh, and making it easier for people to pay you. That's a thing that you, you, you can go, you, well, I have seen that, which is surprising. You know, send an invoice and there's no details on how to pay it, not even bank details. But there's, there's things that you can set up now, you know, direct debits are not as difficult to set up as they were in the past where you'd have to maybe put um, quite a sizable bond with the bank to have a direct debit system. There's, there's things like Gold Cardless and Stripe now, which you can do very easily and it's very easy for customers to pay. Putting a link on an invoice now that they can just click on and pay it. So, you know, just, just a few things that I've seen. Um, through, through business that's helped to sort of boost up bottom line. As I said, there's lots of books and uh, courses and, and things that you can find online to help boost the, the, the bottom line of, of your business. But they were just a few things that I've, I've seen that um, and, and quick fixes that could help you in boosting that bottom line of your business and increasing that profitability.